If you think you have a bad piece of coax cable, or if you have a splitter and the cables are not labeled, this video will show how to test a coax cable with a multimeter and how to identify a cable that is not labeled. I'll also go over a few things other than a broken cable that can cause trouble. Many multimeters don't have a setting to check continuity, so I'll use the resistance setting. If you are confused about the difference between continuity and resistance and want to learn more, I have a video that explains the difference. I'll put a link in the box below this video to that video. Set the multimeter's dial to read ohms. That's usually an omega symbol. Uh, this meter has a K and an omega symbol. Plug the black lead into the common socket. And that also may say common or negative. Plug the red lead into the socket that may have a positive or a ohms or K ohms symbol. When reading resistance, polarity doesn't matter. Notice the display on my multimeter with the meter leads apart is a flashing one with a bunch of zeros. That means open. Before beginning any work using a multimeter, always test the multimeter and the leads. Hold the meter leads together and you should read almost a dead short this meter reads about 0.2 ohms. Next, check to make sure that the meter leads aren't bad. Keep the probe tips shorted together and wiggle the leads around. While you're doing this, the reading on the display should remain steady. If it moves up and down erratically, then it's likely that your meter leads are broken inside of the insulation and You'll need to get a new pair before going any farther. If your multimeter doesn't have auto ranging like this one, then you'll need to set the dial to the correct resistance reading that you think you might read. Uh, there should be uh, a 100 ohm resistance selection on your meter. Set it to that because we shouldn't be reading more than 100 ohms. When using the resistance setting, all power must be removed. Disconnect both ends of the cable that is being tested. You may be thinking that 50 or 75 ohm cable should read 50 or 75 ohms when you're checking it for resistance with a multimeter. That's not true because the ohms referenced in coaxial cable types refer to impedance. Impedance is the term used for resistance in an alternating current circuit. Radio frequencies are transmitted by this type of cable and they are an AC circuit. The difference between a 50 ohm and a 75 ohm cable is basically the ratio between the center conductor and the inner edge of the sleeve formed by the shield. First, I'll test a short piece of cable. There's two paths to check the center conductor and the shield. I'll connect one lead to the center conductor and the other lead to the center conductor on the other connector. I won't allow the meter probes to touch the outer part of the connectors. I have both of the leads connected. The multimeter reads about 0.3 ohms. That's what we'd expect to read for such a short cable. If your cable's longer, you shouldn't read more than maybe 10 or 20 ohms. Next, I'll clip each of the meter leads onto the outer part of the connector. And this time, I'll be careful not to put the multimeter probes against the center conductor. And the multimeter reads about 0.3 or 0.4 ohms. Again, that's what we'd expect for a cable this short. And again, if you were measuring a longer section of cable, you shouldn't expect to read more than maybe 10 or 20 ohms. The next thing to check 
is to check between the shield and the center conductor. And when I'm testing between the shield and the center conductor, I want to read an open if the shield is shorted to the center conductor that means that either the cable's been cut or crushed or maybe one of the connectors is connected incorrectly and the shield is shorted to the center conductor. To check a cable that is longer than multimeter leads test between the center conductor in the outside of the connector. Make sure that you read an open. Then on one connector, gently place a piece of aluminum foil between the shield and the center conductor. If you're trying to identify one of several cables at a splitter, put the foil on the connector located at the non-splitter end then check between the center conductor and the shield and you should read no more than 10 or maybe 20 ohms. If you were trying to identify your cable at the splitter, then you'd have to measure between the center conductor and the shield at each one of the cables until you found the one that's shorted. And that's assuming that you don't have any bad cables. A few other things that can cause trouble, don't kink or pinch or make real hard bends in the cable. Don't run coaxial cable next to or parallel with AC voltage cables. All the cable and the connectors on the circuit must match. In other words, you can't mix 50 ohm cable with 75 ohm cable. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find other videos. And thanks for watching.